Yes, we are recording. Hi. Hello, hello, people. It's been a while. Yes, and we have gathered here to regroup after a while. I think uh, our last writing corner chat was August, maybe something like that. And sure. sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, we did some work sessions on August. And since uh, since then, we've been up to a ton of stuff, so we're here to catch up, regroup, resettle, all that jazz. Re reminisce about September. Mm-hmm. Nox, what have you been up to? I, I've been doing lots of things. <laughs> I, I, went, I, went, uh, I took the super bus, uh -huh. and, I, and I drove it. And I uh -huh. ended up in the Netherlands, and I stayed with my good friend Claire, who did the uh, Italian adaptation for Seeker. Which, um, which we will be talking about, maybe later, in okay. more detail. Yeah, I, th I think it deserves uh, uh, some focus. Mm -hmm. Okay, go so on. I stayed with her, uh, we got some cover work done and bits and pieces. I spent some of the time working on some projects that I, I have recently learned a thing or two about. <laughs> um, so yeah, got, got some work done on Mirror's Legion, but not really, I don't think I'm going anywhere with it, so mm -hmm. that's fine though, it's all, all good practice. Um, and then at, one, at some point I ended up at a convention <laughs> in Belgium, uh, learned a few things, we're going to cover a video of that later on today. Uh, and then I returned to Harlem and relaxed, basically, <laughs> just chilled out, got my heads together, did some more writing, um, and then I came home, and, and now I'm here with you, <laughs> in this, back, back in the uh, control tower. Yeah, get, getting the, it's, it's like, uh, uh, our ships have been to... Uh, separate missions and now we have come to the rendezvous point and we're having a bit of a recon, uh, not recon, regrouping mm -hmm. session. And uh, I got so, uh, Claire went, went above and beyond and she got these made up. Whee! How cool is that? So we had, we, we had matching clothes to go oh. around the with. Cool, uh, cool, cool. Advertising and oh, while we were away, we okay. So the night before the convention, or the day before the convention, we were running around like a pair of blue ass flies <laughs> trying to get some bit, bit, Well, we were looking to get bookmarks printed, uh -huh. um, but it turned out that it's not that easy. It's much mm -hmm. easier to get business cards printed up. So we went to one place and they couldn't help us at all. They were like, sorry. This isn't something we mm -hmm. do. We went to the second place and they bent over backwards to help us. <laughs> and I'm very happy to give a shout, shout out to Prince and Pixels or Pixels and Prince. They did an amazing job. Thank you so much, guys. They bent over backwards to help us. So um, I went with them because I couldn't really come up with anything on the fly. It was like, ah, oh, quotes for the bookmarks. I can't really think of anything. So I was just like, well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So I mm -hmm. went with the, the, the standard. Uh, yeah. Lone space shuttle, shuttle, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And then on the back it says chaosnova.co.uk yeah. in bold letters. Uh, yeah, so, so basically some of the homework we have done for Twitter and uh, and the website already are now produced for, for print. Mm -hmm. And these ones as well for Cal Plaza. Mm -hmm. this, one, this one was a bit more of a rush job. This was a, mm -hmm. I had a really good quote set out, and then I was like, "There's no way that quote's fitting on what you wanted to fit on." <laughs> uh, so I had to sort of come up with one on the fly. So I came up with a station on the edge, an incoming ghost ship, a giant warning of trouble to come. Um, Cal the Barber. So yeah. I was <laughs> sounds <laughs> sounds pretty intriguing, I would say. Oh, thank you. Uh, so yeah, we've now got full box of these things and mm -hmm. we also have Italian seeker versions that Clara's keeping hold of so she's got some ah, she can dispense those 
wherever yes, she goes. And, mm -hmm. and she can dispense them to her target audience as well. Mm. Like she's more likely to encounter Italians than we are, so mm -hmm. that works out much better. So these are, uh, it was a little pricey, but I don't mind because these are sort of long term mm -hmm. things. Uh, and we can get these replicated any time we want, and we can hand them out at, say, 20 conventions to come in the future. Right? So yeah. I would say no, exactly, uh, exactly because they are, they are pretty basic and sort of, uh, I would say, timeless. Like if if they if they would be very uh, super updated and super custom custom made custom tailored, then they wouldn't have as much uh, longevity. But right now, since we've used uh, two year old uh, quotes that uh, we made up two years ago anyway, <laughs> it's like yeah. It's, yeah, mm -hmm. it's already it's already proved and 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 uh, try, true and tried and uh, and not uh, like fancy and in the moment, but it's gonna last probably. <laughs> I was like, if it ain't broke, don't. Yep. There's no need to yep. it. Yeah. So just, just take what we it. have. <laughs> so, yeah, good work. Your quote is now on a thing. <laughs> <laughs> and I and. We, there was a lot of debate going back and forth. Do we want white text on black background? Do we want black text mm -hmm. on white background? And we were like, well, we want it to stand out, but we don't mm -hmm. want to be super expensive with yeah. a fully black background sort of thing. So we sort of compromised on that. And yeah, I think it worked out. Yep. It works. So that was one thing we got done. Um, the day we were due to set off at the convention, we were in the boardroom. Which mm -hmm. is a card game shop in Harlem. It's a really, really nice one. Um, I, I, I did the Thro Magic the Gathering release a set recently uh, called Throne of Eldraine. There was a pre release event on like a couple of days after I left the UK. I was like, well, I want to go to the pre release, so I ended up going to the one in the boardroom. <laughs> Everyone was super friendly. I played probably a total of 12 games mm -hmm. and won one of them. So oh. that gives you an idea of how good I am at this game. Uh, not very, but um, we were in the boardroom, we were enjoying a game of something or other, uh, and we got a phone call from the printing company, and they were like, hey, your, your stuff's ready, come and grab it. Ooh. So we ran, grabbed the printing stuff, and then within the next half hour, we were in the driver's seat of the super bus driving to Belgium. So, yeah. Nice. Uh, yeah, we really cut it close to that one, but it was cool. <laughs> I don't think it mattered anyway because by the time we got to the campsite in Belgium it was like 9 o'clock at night mm -hmm. and we had to deal with like the gatekeeper and, and the gatekeeper at these places like the night watchman doesn't really care mm -hmm. he just wants to get you to the door and yeah. to snooze or watching sports or whatever so um, uh, we had some issues there the van got the van sunk in mud basically <laughs> it, it, it was so the, the van has got massive wheels Imagine mm -hmm. up to up to the half of that wheel was covered in mud. Essentially, the floor of the super bus is on the ground. Ah! Uh. So all all of the wheels are stuck in the mud, and and the poor guy at the campsite is is there with two shovels. So we went to the convention, then we came back, and we were like, well, we'll deal with it after the convention. We got back after the convention. It's about six o'clock in the evening. We started. We had something to eat, and then we went and let the guy know the, the counter that the van had stuck. Well, he sent round one of the groundskeepers, and the groundskeeper turned up with two shovels, and he <laughs> digging the super bus out, like building dirt ramps. <laughs> <laughs> now, like, um, we tried to get the poor thing out, and it just was not coming at all. So uh, he's still there at 9 o'clock at night. He's said to him, he said to me, there's no way we're getting this van out of here. I've got to go ring a towing company. Mm. So he rings the towing company. He can't leave until the towing company Aww. arrives because he needs to show them to where we're going so basically me and Claire gave him a tip we were like thank mm -hmm. you so much for trying mm -hmm. so we get we don't get some money and then the tow company turned up and we had to spend 120 bloody euros to get the no so that was awful absolutely awful but there was no way it was going to get out of there otherwise mm -hmm. and, then, and it's just things like this that have contributed to my decision of maybe the super bus isn't as financially practical as I thought it once was. Um, it was great not having to pay any campsite fees this, this time, and you can 
imagine a month's worth of campsite fees can be mm-hmm. quite expensive. Mm-hmm. This time I didn't have to pay any of that. It was just park it outside Claire's house, a sweet deal. And that was that, basically. Um, so, but you could do that with a flight, right? You could yeah, yeah. It's better like... Better those uh, those perceived savings come with a higher price tag. <laughs> Plus, you have and to worry about your fuel. stuff. Yeah, and that's it. Yeah, you've got the. There's more ease of mind if you just travel with less stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, no vehicles. You don't have to pay fuel costs. You don't have to get it towed from anywhere. There's no sort of background worry that oh my god, we're <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. Is the fuel line gonna rupture? Yeah, yeah so. it's like. If the plane breaks down, it's not your problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If the plane breaks down, it won't be my problem for well, it's my problem for five minutes and then. It's no, I'm, I mean, uh, I mean more like uh, the plane plane is not operational, so you can't take off. So oh, you're okay. you will be mildly inconvenienced, but it's not your problem to sort out. That's that's what I mean. I I, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> the ferry. Okay, so get to the end of the adventure. The ferry uh, got to Harwich at about seven o'clock in the evening, and then took about an hour and a half docking, which was <laughs> awful. It's the worst it's ever been. We we get out, we go through passport control, and then, as always happens on the English side, they <laughs> pulled me into the security booth, and they were like, "Right, we need to go through the van." So they go through the van, they pull everything down, they they ruin all my neat organising of all the stuff so I go flapping about all over the place when you're driving in. Uh, and uh, they're talking about pulling the, the, the plastic off and getting probes and sticking things through there so at this point I just I just go sit down on the side of the thing. I've got nothing to hide there's nothing in the van that I need to worry about I go sit down on the top three and just look relaxed basically and uh, <coughs> after a few more minutes they sort of put everything back close the back doors and the in my life I'm, I'm leaving Harwich Port. The first thing that you do <laughs> when you leave Harwich is a roundabout. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I go around the roundabout, everything in the back of the supercar goes crazy. Just goes flying <laughs> right, all over the place. It smashes, possibly some cutlery's broken, you know. Um, it's just not a good look. But I, I'm like, oh, whatever, I'll deal with it when I get home. It's not like it's, you, can break, you can break one of the stuff in the back, it's fine. Um, and I start down the road, and there's one long road that goes from Harwich to the road that I need, like the, mm-hmm. the main road that leads basically back to my house. Um, I got up to there, loads of signs, road closed, diversion. So I, I have to take the diversion, but the sat nav is constantly telling me to turn around. The sat nav doesn't understand that I'm driving a six meter long van. It's Shut up! Driving like a Shut up! Car. Shut up! <laughs> Turn right! Turn right! <laughs> it was doing my absolute head in. So, uh, I had to go through all these little villages, and every time I thought I was back on track, the sat nav would just lead me back to the forest. And I had to go around. At one point, I ended up going into a farmer's field, uh, and going all the way to the end of the farmer's field, and that had a big road close sign. So, on this narrow road in a farmer's field, with a, with a sort of verge on one side, like a, like a little hill sort of thing on one side, ditched on the other, that I could very much easily fall into, and a very real risk of me getting the super bus stuck in this middle of us nowhere, going to have to get another tow sort of deal. So, I reversed the van as far as it would go up this incline, and then I pull it back round again as far as it will go, and I managed to get out of the farmer's field, but of course, at this point, the farmer's field is all rutted and horrible, so I'm driving the tooth bus down the van, and it's just doing this and going crazy, and going all over the place, it's just a nightmare, so that was another adventure, I managed to get back onto the A12, managed to get home, and uh, yeah, unlocked everything, and for the next couple of days, I think I just had to de-gouse, basically, I was like, not doing a damn <laughs> That was just too much. Um, so, it, it used to be uh, better going in the van, but now it's just a nightmare. So, <laughs> thank you, thank you that, please. It's, it's an asset that I could release the funds from and put into Calisnova at some point and mm-hmm. make things better that way. 
not the end, is it? You can always get another super. Bowl. So yeah, in yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to turn around and sell all this. <laughs> price pad to see. No. <laughs> I need. I need a break. Get a CRX back on the road, maybe. Um, so yeah, that, that's what I've been up to. What have you been up to? <laughs> I started a job. <laughs> yeah. So I I didn't mean to. <laughs> I had I had no intention to uh, to actually start a permanent employment. Like I I was sure I was looking for uh, looking out for new projects and all uh, because I think I had uh, I had already gotten all the monies from the spring projects and I was like yeah, give me more. Uh, but also I wasn't uh, I wasn't like too actively looking because uh, uh, I was ac I actually got paid for the story that I wrote for the shared universe book uh, here so there I was diddle daddling minding my own business uh, going to the uh, monthly tavern night that the local uh, sci-fi crowd uh, has and uh, one of my friends from the writing workshop asked, uh, we, we went out for a smoke and she was like, yeah, we, we are looking for, a, for somebody, to, uh, somebody to manage the uh, computer lab in the library. Uh, maybe you're interested? I'm like, oh, um, uh, uh, okay, tell me more. <laughs> and uh, the thing was that uh, they were looking for somebody to do it full time, but I wasn't ready to give up uh, my freedom so easily. <laughs> so I was like, "Yeah, uh, okay, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send them my uh, my papers, but I'm gonna request for half time." And uh, I think a few days, uh, like I, I, I sent the I sent the papers in like the last day of the. Uh, of the deadline that they had and then a few days they they let me know that oh we would like to talk to you and I'm like sure <laughs> so I went in for an interview uh, and uh, and I think if I if I had been offering up myself full-time they would have they might have hired me on spot but uh, the timing uh, or the hours rate w was a negotiation point so in the end uh, I did have to take on a little bit more than just half time, so now I'm like uh, uh, three quarters, uh, thir thirty hours a week, uh, which I think is pretty optimal because it uh, mostly leaves my Mondays free, and uh, if I do a Saturday, then I get another weekday off. So basically, it it actually leaves plenty of time to do writing stuff and I discovered that this sort of external stru structure that sometimes uh, is very demanding but sometimes uh, you don't have you don't get many users and, and you're sitting there uh, standing by uh, those standing by moments are actually very good for uh, for uh, little sneaky writing and uh, and and translating so it's like yeah if I have a big text that I have to uh, wrangle fully and think through and you know approach as a big thing uh, those are not suitable tasks to do in the library between work right. but but if I if I have to write like uh, a few paragraphs or may maybe I, maybe I have to fill up a environmental a description here and there or have to come up with uh, some sentences to uh, to complete a, a scene that's that's the sort of work that uh, that I have I've already done a lot of and maybe I'm overly optimistic here but I think it, it seems that it almost seems like I have actually gotten more writing and more editing done while on the job than uh, in my uh, infinite freedom of sitting uh, sitting at home and sort of trying to get activated. Yeah. So yeah, so so uh, I've been uh, I've also been taking full advantage of the logistics. So I live on uh, like a suburb or well not not 
uh, not quite the edge of the town anymore, but it's, it's it's like a few kilometers off the center. And the library uh, that I work in is in that center of the town. So, uh, so far I've been taking the walk there every morning, which gives me almost an hour of sort of getting activated, waking up, having coffee on my on my way as I as I walk. And I have also used my lunch breaks for going on a walk. So uh, I would say that I am physically a little bit more active, e even though I do go on the walks when uh, when I'm working at home as well. But still. It's more regular now, so I regularly do a longer walk and then a shorter walk. I have these structured days that have some uh, uh, unpredictable time in the middle. So I would say that all in all, this seems like a pretty good solution writing-wise. Yeah. <coughs> and you get paid for it as well. Yeah, that's the, like that's that that's the nice thing about it. They also pay me. <laughs> so uh, right now I'm already planning to uh, planning to put a little bundle into the uh, Chaos Nova Universe Fund uh, every month, which I think is a uh, I think uh, putting a direct bundle uh, in the joint cause is a is a better arrangement than the the Patreon uh, mm, yeah. uh, solution that we used to have. The uh, the person that we use on Fiverr for our artwork and everything mm -hmm. uh, is obviously doing very well for themselves because they've managed to put their prices up. Um, mm -hmm. So, shout of our I think I can discuss the pricing, right? Cowardvar sure. It's, uh, it's the practicalities of writer's life. Of course, we, we can discuss it. <laughs> Very true. So, at the I think it was at the beginning of the year, we released Cow Devarza. We got the cover made um, by a person from German Creative on Fiverr. And the cost for it was either £10 or €10, Euros, probably €10. Euros. Mm -hmm. And I, she did such a good job of it, or I felt that she did such a good job that I gave her a Fiverr tip. So, total for Cow Devarza, the cover, €15. Euros. Mm -hmm. Whichever one it was. Um, the Italian Seeker cover has cost us a total of either 40 or 45 euros, mm -hmm. which is fair enough. She's obviously doing very well for herself and is getting demand for covers left, right, and centre now. I'm very happy for her. And uh, well, I think it's probably a good idea to stick with her because we've got mm -hmm. a bit of a rapport going. And yeah. And she's which is a success with our books, which is always nice. Um, so, yeah, German creative on fire. Yeah, but, uh, I would also point out cost that. Of is going yeah, on. yeah. yeah. So it's it's a good thing that we have some extra resource. Uh, uh, I don't I don't know about the technicalities, but it might also be that it's not the. the uh, base price that's going up, but it might also be that this the Italian Sika cover had different works entailed than the Code of Barza because you have a human figure there. Uh, I think uh, there were... so so there might have been uh, stock photo cost, uh, mm -hmm. like new stock photo cost, there might have been fonts to import, and then also uh, I would say that a cover with a human figure is it's a bigger job than a cover with more abstract or like ships and 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 stuff so maybe combining the elements itself was a bigger job so I'm um, I'm sort of suspecting that uh, some of the price might come from that uh, on Fiverr it's done in like a tier system oh, okay. so you select the job before oh, okay. you basically um, but uh, other things have changed as well. So mm. instead of the, the one revision that you got with like the Cow of Oz cover, you now have unlimited revisions. Oh, okay. Uh, when it comes to uh, any tier, so mm. on Fiverr you get there's three tiers. Usually the first one is basic. Mm -hmm. That would have been back in the day the ten dollar, ten euro mm -hmm. Cow of Oz cover. Now it's like the thirty five dollar 
cover. That's mm. now the basic tip here. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, which... Up, but things have also changed. Yeah, and, and overall it sounds like more options or more flexible solutions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you've got more uh, comfort and yeah. I apologise. <laughs> <laughs> but so yeah, uh, I have uh, I have been to my new position as the uh, as the person who sits at the computer lab and helps everybody out with anything at all. Uh, I, I've been doing that uh, about a month now. I, I have I have even had a payday. And I have uh, been going on uh, more walks than I usually do, so, so yeah, sounds like a win. Very cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I also I'm also practicing my uh, photocopy foo a lot <laughs> because okay. there there will be there will be there's uh, there's some renovations in the library and another department. Uh, that's very active uh, has been brought upstairs where I am and uh, the last uh, last week or so I have had to help out more with photocopying so I'm learning a lot there <laughs> oh, it sounds like a well funded library well it's the it's the public library the city the city library uh, public library in the UK means something different oh okay <laughs> they're, they're not that well funded well, uh, I I don't I don't think that if you compare with I don't know I don't I don't I, I don't know what the comparative thing would be. Like I, I would say that uh, the state institutions and and public thing is so uh, they st they they have a lot of limitations, mm. but. Uh, Within those limitations, we are also offering a lot back to the public. So, like you have the, you have you have the newspapers and the magazines that you can read on spot, and you can uh, lend the books, and then uh, like it's, it's not like the whole uh, whole floor is full of computers. No, no, no. There's like uh, twelve machines, and that's it. <laughs> mm. So it's uh yeah, it, it's a it's a little bit like. Uh, I think it reminds me of the school's computer lab a little bit, except for adults. Well, I like it. It's down. Mm. <laughs> uh, yeah, you got a job. Yep. <laughs> yep. 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 Like, like. Oh, by the way. <laughs> Yeah, that was uh, that was completely unexpected, and uh, and uh, I was I was kind of nervous that maybe I'm not ready for it, like because I'm, I, uh, I'm getting s I have gotten so used to the uh, whole uh, freelance work, uh, freelance working from home arrangement, and like oh I don't know if I can take it, uh, yeah, and and it turns out that I actually get more done on the days. <laughs> on the job than, than my home days, so yeah, so there is that. <laughs> That'll show you, me. <laughs> but yeah, I think, uh, I think part of the, uh, part of the, uh, oh, I don't know how I will manage feeling came from remembering the older jobs that sort of uh, ate away my time and took a lot of mental took up a lot of mental resource and didn't leave much time for anything but I, I I think maybe I've just gotten better with managing my own stuff myself since then and uh, if I compare working at school with working at library, the thing is that at school I would uh, I would finish the day and I would still have all the ongoing problems. Like I would still have to uh, figure out the next, uh, next week's lessons and still have the uh, personal issues uh, or what have you. But in the library you do your thing during the day 
you print out whatever people want to print out, you make their photocopies, you help out somebody with digital signing, whatever. And then the day ends and it's and it's finished. So it's like it's it's Yeah, 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 yeah. I will happily skip away and I don't I don't take those issues with me. Uh I'm I mean if uh, at some point I know I'm gonna have to start uh, doing some trainings and uh, and maybe giving some lectures as well so that that would also give a little bit more of the uh, long-term uh, thinking or long-term preparations but still uh, I think all my worries were based on on some old works workplaces and we are not there anymore <laughs> So, busy autumn. I try to borrow. <laughs> right. Uh, I don't have much to add about uh, September, October at the moment. Shall we finish up this episode and then start anew about the convention? We shall reconvene with more goodness shortly. Yes. Okay, let's see if I can manage my hotkeys and if not, then I'm gonna have to do it manually. <laughs>